Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to the divine service on this second Sunday of Easter. We continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're able, please stand as we prepare for worship with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As Christ has extended his peace to us this day, we extend the peace of Christ to one another.
in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. People of God, this is same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 4. <clears throat> the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that anything, any of these things that belonged to him was of his own. 
but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought them the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. The epistle is from 1 John chapters 1 and 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the twentieth chapter. On the evening of that day, first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, 
place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, the disciples were inside again. Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came, stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to, them, to him, Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. At this time, everyone is welcome to be seated, and young members of the congregation are welcome for our children's message.
He comes to us through his word. He comes to us through baptism. And he comes to us through communion. And he gives you the faith to help you believe in him. And for all of this, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming to us and helping us believe in you. Please keep us in the true faith. Amen.
breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear lambs for whom Christ suffered and died and was raised on the third day. Up the road, somewhere near Mary, Marysville, Ohio, there is a large, very large dairy farm. Thousands of cows on a conveyor belt, each day delivering enough milk to supply Butler County and beyond. But all that good milk will do you no good unless it is delivered to you today and you swallow it down. The same is true of the one true Christian faith. Christ has won it all and done it all. But his gift must be delivered to you today. And I have good news for you. Our Lord calls, ordains, and sends milkmen to deliver the milk of forgiveness. And my aim is that you open your faith and mouth wide and swallow down the pure milk. On December 25th, you celebrated the enfleshment of the eternal Son of of God. He humbled himself to be born of a virgin and to become like us in all things except for sin. Then as he grew, he humbled himself and was obedient to his earthly parents, fulfilling for you the fourth commandment, which all too often you disobey. Then as he grew into adulthood at about 33, he humbled himself and was baptized by John, a sinner's baptism. And he came out of the water, shouldering upon himself the sins of the whole world. And John said, and there he goes, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He humbled himself during his earthly ministry, fully obeying the will of his Father, which will you willfully disobey. Then the last week of his life, he humbled himself again, submitting to injustice, mockery, cruel beating, and the ultimate humiliation, death, on a cross. Christ did it all. Earned it all. For you. And quite apart from you. You were nowhere to be found. When Christ filled the storehouse of heaven. With the pure milk. Of the forgiveness of sin. All that good milk is of no avail to you here today unless it is delivered to you and you swallow it down. So, what was the Lord's plan? Good question. And the good answer is in today's gospel. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. There's the plan. Our Lord calls, ordains, and sends milkmen to give out the pure milk of forgiveness. Now grab hold of this and hold it fast. So the first day of the week, the day of resurrection, 
the first business of our Lord, the first words out of his mouth were to establish the delivery system. Does that say something to you about the importance? He calls, ordains, and sends milkmen so that you here today, 2,000 years removed from Christ, can swallow it down. I think this is rather stunning. Our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit entrusts the treasure of heaven to mere mortal, marred men. How can he be so foolish? But what is foolishness to me is the wisdom of God. Mere, mortal, marred men charged with announcing the good news that through the holy, innocent, bitter suffering and desert resurrection of our Lord, your sins are forgiven. But I'm hearing something. A complaint. Preacher, I don't need some man or some church to forgive my sins. It's all about me and God, I take my milk straight from the udder. Only God can forgive sins, preacher. Now, where have I heard that complaint before? I know. There was that day when four men brought their paralytic friend to Jesus. And they plopped the paralytic in front of Jesus. And he looked at him and said, Son, your sins are forgiven. Well, the religious conservatives who were listening to Jesus began to say in their hearts, Who does he think he is? Only God can forgive sins. Well, Jesus knew what they were saying in their hearts, and he responded, That you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Now tattoo that on your forehead. In his humanity, Jesus, the Son of Man, brought to earth the gift of heaven, the forgiveness of sins. How dare he? He dares because the Father sent him. To deliver the gift. And on that one day. He delivered it directly. Right to that. Poor paralytic. Now saints. Don't throw your hymnals at me. When you hear this. The forgiveness of sins. Does not come. Directly to you. From God. Forgiveness is mediated from Christ to you, mediated by this thing we call the office of the keys. But you need more proof, and what better proof than the words of Jesus? In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus addressing Peter said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And then in chapter 18, he addresses all the disciples and says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And then we heard in John's gospel, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. That's three witnesses. For good measure, I'll throw in Luther. He writes concerning the forgiveness of sins. I believe that in this communion, meaning church, but nowhere else there is forgiveness of sins that outside her pale there is no provision for the forgiveness of sins. The power and authority to forgive sins on earth is given to the church. And the church on behalf of Christ does what Christ did, calls, ordains, and sends milkmen 
who on behalf of Christ and the church deliver the pure milk directly to you. Do not buy the Pharisaic faith that says, it's just me and God. I have no need for a church or a milkman. Only God can forgive my sins. Also, do not buy the modern psycho religion that says, you must forgive yourself. You have no authority to forgive yourself. It must come from above, from outside of you, and be delivered to you by his delivery system. This one milk of forgiveness comes in a number of flavors. It comes in water flavor, in holy baptism. And you did not baptize yourself. It was administered to you given to you in the church through the servant. It also comes in body and blood flavor, Holy Communion. And again, you don't commune yourself. It is given to you. It comes in word flavor, the preaching of the gospel. And you don't preach to yourself. It comes to you from outside of you. But I must mention a fourth flavor of this milk. Unfortunately, it's up on the top shelf of the grocery store, and we just don't see it very easily. Private absolution. It's the fifth part of the catechism. You can read it there in your hymn book. And it's sandwiched between baptism and the Lord's Supper, which means it is another means of delivering the milk to you. I hear another question. Well, why this fourth one? I've got baptism. I've got preaching. I've got the Lord's Supper. What need have I of this poor stepchild private absolution? Good question. And the good answer is there are some sins that bore themselves into the conscience. Take root in the conscience and cause what our Lutheran confessions call an anxious, troubled, or bad conscience. And such sins are best dealt with in private absolution. An example is in order. I knew a young man about 56 years ago or so who committed a particularly pernicious sin. Two years later, he heard the gospel and became Jesus' little lamb. And he knew that his sins were forgiven. All of them through Christ Jesus. But this one sin continued to bother the conscience. And so some 40 years later, he found a milkman called servant of the Lord. Spoke that sin into the ears of that man. And back into his ears, he heard the words. As a called servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins, even that one. And I can assure you that that not so young man is no longer bothered by that particularly pernicious sin. It is certainly the case that some here today are living with an anxious, troubled conscience. Yes, you, you're baptized and you rejoice daily in your baptism. Yes, you're here, hearing the word of the gospel. Yes, you're here, receiving the body and blood of Christ. And yet, there's something eating at the conscience. Get thee to the milkman. Speak into the ears of the one called and sent by Christ that sin. And those ears, by the way, become the tomb from which that sin never comes back. And then into your ears hear the words as a called servant of Christ. By his authority, I forgive you all your sins. You see, at that moment, 
all the power and authority of the kingdom of heaven comes to earth in a flood washing into your conscience washing away that troubling sin if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven amen now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Let us rise if you are able and together let us confess with one voice the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son is the firstborn from the dead. In him we have been reborn into a new and living hope. Nurture us with pure milk of your word, that we may grow to maturity of faith and have everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, grant to those ordained for your service the gift of the Spirit, wisdom that comes down from above, and grace to faithfully fulfill their holy calling where you have placed them. Lord, in your mercy. As your people are united in the common life and love of our Savior, grant that we would share that life and love with those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Build up the households of your people that your holy children begotten in baptism, may grow in your grace and share together your forgiveness and life. Lord, in your mercy. You have instituted authorities to carry out your justice. Bless all who make, administer, and judge the laws of our land. Give them wisdom, integrity, and honor to serve according to your goodwill. Lord, in your mercy. As your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples, give your presence and comfort to the troubled in our midst, especially Elias, Carolyn, Susan and Mike, Carol, Jimmy, Debbie, Gwen, Roxanne, Rosalie, Brian, Sherry, Grace, Don, Parker, Bob, Sandy, Sally, Danielle, Kelly, Rob, Burl, Jenny, Amanda, and Ella. Comfort also those who weep with the blessed joy of Easter morning. Lord, in your mercy. Father of the risen Christ, you give us the crucified and risen body and blood of our Lord in this holy supper. Let us taste that the Lord is good and continually grow up unto salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace, for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the blessed sacraments that through them we may have comfort and the forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may heartily believe your word and through the holy sacraments established our faith, faith day by day until at last we obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God now and forever. Amen. Especially we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and all the hosts of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive Renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. <laughs> you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
please be seated for just a few announcements. First of all, uh, there are some flowers out in this hallway over here that need homes to go to. If you, if you did order a flower and would like to take it home, please take it today, otherwise we'll find a home for it tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are also, there's also the big solar eclipse happening here in town, and we invite anyone to come to our solar eclipse party for, tomorrow from 1.30 to 4.30 right here on campus. If you'd like to come, please register on the website or the QR code in the news and notes. On Wednesday, I'll be offering my confessions class, and, to, and this time we'll be studying the epitome of the Book of Concord. If you would like to come to that, please come. If you, if you haven't attended any of those classes before, don't worry. We take it one document at a time, and we just dis have some discussion over the document itself. So that's Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And also on Friday uh, is the annual school's walkathon. Come to walk, watch fun, donate to the event, or do all three. Fun, uh, funds raised will go towards paving a new driveway, and you can look in the news and notes for, to learn more. We also just want to thank Pastor Casey for coming in and, and uh, being with us this morning. He'll be with us next week as well. And con continue to pray for Pastor Judd and his wife as they are traveling in Europe right now and taking a little bit of a break. So keep them in your prayers. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you, God.